Endurance events have been a staple of the Gran Turismo franchise since its release, but out of all the endurance events featured in these games, there is one which is rather curious. The 30 laps of Trial Mountain in Gran Turismo 2. With its short length and low powered opponents, it makes for a good introduction to the world of racing without bathroom breaks. So you start to race with your streetcar of choice and… is that a full blown race car? Meet the Vector and 12 LM Edition. We have a 600 horsepower B12 B in this event, which is way past the 295 horsepower restriction on first upon us. Unlike the well documented historic cup race at Rome where the GT40 appears, the M12 wasn't intended to be there, but I might have a plan against this cheater. After trying multiple cars, I settled with an S15 Nissan Silvia. It has good handling and excellent acceleration. Above all, it's rather consistent even with worn tires, so I feel confident this car could beat the M12 and I managed to practice my blocking skills beforehand on my last stream, where I did this race with an Autosam AZ1. Having a rather intense race against a Lotus Elise, you should subscribe to avoid missing out on such events. As lights go out, it's pretty obvious these streetcars aren't a match for the S15, outside being a roadblock which I have to avoid, but I make quick work of them and so does the M12 ahead. My opponent struggles with this first section of Trial Mountain, even with cold tires I managed to make a dive and take first place before the first sector. This next section before the main straight is rather tight and one of the worst spots to defend with two cars barely fitting side by side. I'm fortunate enough to hold it before the main straight where our power differences are more than obvious. I keep the M12 behind me with some clever blocking. There's no rest for me as the following section is the toughest of the track. It's a steep uphill section with multiple turns where the M12 destroys me. It tries to overtake me twice. I hold for a bit longer but it manages to overtake me. Or not. I may make a dive and fight back, however it outpaces me and I lose first place yet again, until I cut the final chicane and overtake it once again. I tackle the following section at full throttle. It's all about weight transfer as I flick the steering in order to make the second turn, but I went over the curve which clearly sends the car flying. Still, it's not enough to stop me as I remain first as we approach the braking zone. The S15 can help but drift in mountain roads, as the M12 approaches and sadly in this section that mistake was expensive. There's nothing I can do as I lose first place without a fighting chance. The main straight is next, which doesn't help my case and shows how brutal our pace differences are, but it's the next set of uphill corners which fills the gap between us even further. I almost lose 1.5 seconds on them. At first glance they don't seem too bad, but I swear this section is the worst. The final section of the track is a small stop gap as I'm faster through the final chicane. Goes to show how important the right lines are. I also have to be consistent with my laps or my strategy won't work at all. At the end of lap 5 I start to lap these lower opponents for the first time. For one, this shows how overpowered both the S15 and M12 are compared to the rest of the field. It also shows another flaw of the AI as my opponent struggles while lapping other cars, to the point where I manage to drop our gap from 7.6 seconds to 5.5. Of course this is after the first sector where I have an advantage. Anyway, now it's my time to get past to the traffic, being rather lucky as my window opens right on the main straight, meaning I can use both of these cars to slipstream and reach top speed faster. As acceleration is more important in Trial Mountain, my S15 has rather short gears. This is very useful for uphill sections as I can keep my car at peak power most of the time, minimizing my losses, even if I still manage to lose a second over my opponent anyway. With traffic behind us, I managed to clock my fastest lap yet, a 125.755, which happens to be a rather decent pace for the S15. If I could hold this pace for a couple of laps, we'll be fine, but that didn't happen. By now, I am starting to wear the tires off and it caught me off guard. In this following lap, my pace falls through a cliff as I try to adapt. By lap 9, I somewhat managed to recover, but the damage is already done. I am 11 seconds behind the M12, 
and by lap 10, the S15 started playing its favorite Aerobit playlist. I drift a few times through this lap and my pace drops yet again. I also lapped the last car for the second time. One has to feel bad for this Alpha 166, it's a brilliant car, maybe one day I can race with it instead. I have to wait another lap before meeting traffic yet again, and this time I encounter them at a bad spot. Right after the first sector I had to make two overtakes, one of them in this turn which is rather awkward to overtake, proven by the amount of contact I make with the Megan Coupé. The final car I overtake is the BMW 3 Series Compact, at the end of the main straight, with a little bit of contact yet again. How many laps ahead of these cars will I be when the race is over? Make your guess on the comments below. Now we are reaching a stage where my tires are rather worn and my pace starts to suffer. I managed to go below the 127 mark for lap 13, starting lap 14 rather well. This lap is important as the M12 will stop for fresh tires. Some of you might wonder why I didn't go for an undercut. There are a few reasons why I decided to stop after the M12. Since I am on a one-stop strategy, I have to make sure my tires will survive until the end of the race, and they are at their limit right now. I did my best to hold them for as long as possible. Sure, I can still drive the car, but they won't resist much longer. I'll make my stop on lap 15. I catch up to the M12 as it leaves the pits, overtaking and taking first place as we wrap the first half of the race. I overtake the Alpha yet again at the end of the first sector, and the M12 is out for blood. If I make a mistake here, it's game over and I'll have to restart. I am rather nervous as I want to enter the pits in first place, and the M12 manages to overtake the 166 in the main straight. Since I always lose time in the following section, all I can do is hope that our gap is big enough through these turns. And it is, I make it to the pits in the first place, ready to start the second half of the race with a new set of tires. I lose my position to the M12, now I have to drive as fast as I can to make sure our gap doesn't grow. These new tires are cold, and they get a wake up call as the S15 drifts a little. Now I need to maintain my distance with the M12, anything under 20 seconds is good enough. If it goes above, then it's time to be concerned. I start to recover my pace as these tires warm up. These medium tires are pretty good, and they have excellent endurance for its grip. By lap 17 I start pushing yet again. I happen to have a clear track as I won't encounter any traffic in this lap. The S15 drives really well, it has that perfect balance of stability without suffering from crazy understeer. Given how demanding this challenge is, you need a car which feels good to drive and doesn't surprise you. Of course, speed is also important, but it's hard to be fast with a car which doesn't feel good. Case and point, I managed to beat my previous record by over a second. I didn't expect such a good lap here. Now is my chance to maintain this gap, but traffic says otherwise. In the following lap I start to meet them yet again. I have to take a rather awkward line to dodge the BMW, which I am surprised it didn't end in tragedy. This is the sort of things you shouldn't do in endurance racing. Mind you, not that I'm an expert, but you don't really think about it while racing. You just want to maintain your pace and catch the opponent ahead. For the MGF, I happen to be at the better place as I overtake it down the main straight. These encounters with traffic weren't ideal, but a 125 lap is still pretty good, as long as they are constant, which I managed to do. It isn't until lap 21 where I start to meet traffic yet again and I make the same mistake. I try to cut a corner to avoid the 166 and hit the curb, which sends me off flying. This was a terrible idea, but well, I managed to land safely and keep racing. Even if I lost a good of amount of time with that little detour to the stars. Now I enter a stage in the race where my pace starts to drop slightly, in no small part thanks to tire wear. At the start of lap 23 I meet more traffic, which I get through right at the start of the lap. This time my maneuver is better and I don't fly off the track, always improving here, but my lap times aren't improving. Each lap is slower than the previous.
years. By now I'm running at an average pace of a 127, and the M12 is starting to pull away. I managed to go down to 126.994 for lap 24, but I'm almost 18 seconds behind, which is concerning given I still have to survive for 4 laps before the M12 stops again. Another thing to keep in mind is the fact that I have to do my final laps with these tires, which will be really worn by the end of the race. I am not looking forward to dealing with understeer, which is already starting to show its ugly face. I have to approach every corner with a different line in order to turn in. I also have to brake a bit harder than before as I'm using weight transfer to rotate the car as much as possible. Clearly this is a slower but it keeps me on the race, I just can't make a second stop. These following laps happen to be rather similar, where the M12 just keeps pulling away and my pace doesn't really improve. I could keep talking about tires like a terrible Lewis Hamilton copycat, but I will spare you all for the time being. Instead skip to lap 28, where the M12 will make its second stop. I am almost 19 seconds behind as the M12 enters for its final stop. I struggle with the following turn as my own tires have little grip. I really don't need to touch grass right now, but it's not enough as I spot traffic right ahead, the last thing I need as they could block my line with ease. I cut through the final chicane as I spot the M12 leaving the pits, and I managed to overtake both the Megane and the M12 as they leave the pits. But this isn't enough as I also managed to overtake the MGF right after it, meaning I have a clear track at least for now. I can spot another car on the map which will give me troubles if I am not clever about it. With the M12 behind me I am rather nervous, and I can't help but pause the game to recover from it. I really don't know how I managed to make those overtakes, and I don't want to lose because I've been trying this race for quite a while already. So I have to hold the M12 behind me for a lap and a half, and the S15 isn't helping as it understeers right before the main straight. I really want to have the biggest gap possible between me and the M12, as it will overpower me in the straight and I can't really overtake it with raw power. Of course as I said that and I look behind, the car is closing in and it manages to overtake take me, but I break a bit later and manage to recover the position. I hold the inside as we are side by side and I kind of tap it so I can make up a little bit of time, and hold my position yet again. It tries to overtake me but I defend with the entire car again, and I manage to hold my position. But nothing could prepare me for what comes next, as the green BMW head blocks the line of the M12, forcing it to overtake on the following turn, which I use to my advantage as we go three wide and recover first place yet again. The M12 is behind me but it is slower in the following chicane, which I used to my advantage and create the smallest gap possible, which is enough of a breathing room for me. This first section goes on my side as I am faster than the M12, which is a rather welcome break. I really want to win this race so I don't can't make any mistakes. I say that as I go wide before the tunnel, which isn't ideal, but I still hold first place. The M12 is behind me and, while it's nowhere to be seen, I know it's close because I can hear it. I can't help but look behind yet again and the car is almost there and ready to overtake me. We enter the main straight for the final time, as the M12 bumps into me as we make the right turn into the tunnel. Yes, I know you're there, just stop bumping into me, thanks. At this point, racing rules go through the window, and I start to weave in order to block the M12 as much as I can. I use it for a small speed boost as it overtakes me, but yet again I break later and I manage to recover the position. The M12 bumps into me again as we approach the worst section of the track. The M12 destroys me in this uphill section, as it tries to overtake me and pushes me yet again. I do the same and I manage to stay first but I was too slow, giving it enough room to overtake me yet again. But the race isn't over, and I try to overtake it yet again, making a dive and pushing it off the road, and I managed to recover first place. I start to weave yet again holding it behind before it breaks for the final chicane, and I manage to stay first. I win the race. I manage to beat the M12. I can't believe it really, I was speechless when this happened. And I also managed to beat the rest of the pack for 5 laps, but that's kind of irrelevant now, is it? 
After trying multiple cars and countless attempts with the S15, I managed to beat this car which has been terrorizing me since my childhood. Way back then my cop with Gran Turismo 2 had this strange glitch and I never managed to beat it until now. I hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Until next time, bye for now.